Namaste. Recently we had a comment on one of our videos and the commenter was saying, well, there's a difference between intellect, intelligence, and enlightenment. And that enlightenment is generally thought of as being beyond intelligence, beyond intellect, beyond the mind. And while this is true, we also see that practically speaking, the people who actually attain complete enlightenment, um, fourth path and beyond, are geniuses. I can think of so many just off the top of my head. Ramana Maharshi, Srila Prabhupada, Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa, Paramahansa Yogananda. I mean, the list goes on and on. That these were not only enlightened people, and, and there are many that you haven't heard of, <laughs> that are also geniuses who can discourse effortlessly on any subject, not only spiritual, but of course, actually the only subject is enlightenment. Everything else feeds into it, is related to it, is part of the approach to it. So if you know enlightenment, if you have realized the self, you know everything, I mean, or you, you have the potential of knowing everything with a very small effort. This is intelligence, a specific kind of intelligence, not the kind of intelligence that we see in the world where people's mind jump from one thing to another like a monkey. Uh, the mind tries to achieve satisfaction by becoming attached and clinging to one thing. And then when it doesn't get it, it jumps and clings to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And this can happen so fast within a fraction of a second that you're not even aware of it. Did you ever get up to go get something in another room and then when you walk into the next room, you realize you forgot what it is. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this is called loss of intelligence due to change of context. And this happens all the time. Why? Because we are not operating with the proper kind of intelligence. What is the proper kind of intelligence? is described in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, 41 through 44. Here, O son of Kuru, there is one thought of a resolute nature. Many branched and endless are the thoughts of the irresolute. No conviction of a resolute nature is formed in the mind of those who are attached to pleasures and power and whose minds are drawn away by the flowery speech which the unwise, enamored of Vedic utterances, declaring there is nothing else, full of desire, having swarga as their goal, utter, a speech which promises birth as the reward of actions and which abounds in specific acts, for the attainment of pleasure and power, O son of Prithad. So the intelligence which has a mundane goal as its aim can never be resolute because it's always changing. Now we want one thing, and the next minute we want something else, and then it goes on and on. Just like the constantly changing images on a TV screen. Uh, there's a reason why the television is designed the way it is, with just a few seconds between cuts. That is because people's minds also have that 
short of an attention span. But the kind of intelligence that Krishna is talking about here in Bhagavad Gita is called Vyavasayatmika Buddhi. Vyavasaya Atmika Buddhi. Buddhi means intelligence. And Atmika, of course, means of the being, of the consciousness. And Vyavasaya is a very interesting word. Let's look in the Sanskrit dictionary. It says, strenuous effort or exertion, settled determination, resolve, purpose, intention to make up one's mind, resolve, determine, resolution personified. And there's a hint here. This is also one of the names of Vishnu. So, Vyavasayatmika buddhi is that kind of intelligence which strives unerringly and without pause towards a specific conclusion. And of course, what we're trying to do here is reach enlightenment. So we're talking about intelligence that strives uninterruptedly, without pause, without deviation, towards self-realization. And this consciousness is actually a kind of being, a state of being, that in Gita is called determination, vyavasai. So this is what we teach in matrix learning. It's not exactly the development of intelligence in the ordinary sense, but the kind of intelligence that results in a change in being that is no more jumping from one object to another like a monkey with a short intention span, but is fixed permanently on the highest goal of life, which is self-realization. This is our aim. And the means that we take up to achieve this aim are four. And they are related to the four states of consciousness. Waking, dreaming, deep sleep, and Turiya, transcendental consciousness. So they are duplication, understanding, contemplation, and realization. These are the four stages of the exercise of intelligence to attain self-realization. And this means a change in being. For example, when I sit down to make these videos, I don't have any idea what I'm going to say. <laughs> I have a theme, that's all. I have an aim. And I have vyavasai atmika buddhi in regards to that aim. I have an intelligence which is pointing towards that aim uninterruptedly and undeviatingly so that even if I have to go off and take a side trip and explain something, I'm never forgetting the actual context, the actual aim, which in this case is to explain the relationship between intelligence and enlightenment. I use the example of a pole vaulter. A pole vaulter runs up, plants his pole in the ground, in a place called the box, and then uses the pole to vault up over the crossbar. What's happening here? The pole vaulter is taking his horizontal momentum, running up to the jump. When he puts the pole in the ground, it creates a lever 
and he compresses the pole with his weight and his momentum and uses it to create vertical momentum that takes him up over the crossbar so he can complete the jump. So in this metaphor, horizontal momentum is intelligence. Vertical momentum is consciousness. The horizontal momentum of intelligence is created by karma, the process of karma, cause and effect, becoming, or paticca samupada. And we've studied that here on this channel quite a bit. Process of becoming, dependent origination. And then the four states of consciousness, of course, we've also discussed extensively in these videos. So what happens in spiritual life is that one uses the intelligence to create the karma that develops into devotion, ananya bhakti, another subject we've gone into in depth. Ananya bhakti means devotion to the self, devotion to Brahman, pure consciousness. So this devotion, when it matures, develops automatically into meditation, Raja Yoga. So Karma Yoga develops into Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga, when it ripens, develops into Raja Yoga. And Raja Yoga, at its completion, automatically brings enlightenment. There is no effort required. The only effort required is the meditation itself. And that springs spontaneously from the maturity of devotion, which in turn grows in the fertile soil of completed karma yoga. So all these four steps, all these four stages, all these four types of consciousness are necessary. And what is the thread that ties it all together? Intelligence. The intelligence of genius. We don't find anyone who has become fully enlightened, a world teacher, who is not a genius. They're extremely sharp. Huh? And they produce mountains of creative works, seemingly without any effort. Because why? They have the being of a genius. They don't need to sit and think and crank out with the brain, you know, like the scientists and mathematicians and intellectuals do. They simply manifest like a flood this great outpouring of knowledge and wisdom, all leading to enlightenment and self-realization. How do they do it? Well, <laughs> that's exactly what we cover in the course on matrix learning. So you should go to our site, Noli, huh? and register and take the preliminary courses. And then when you're ready, take the matrix learning course, which is going to teach you how to develop the being of a genius. And once you understand that, you can very easily go on to the next courses on consciousness and attain at least the first stage of self-realization, pretty much without any effort. This is the purpose of NOLI. This is why we concentrate on the process of learning. And this is why we call the ultimate intelligence the being of a genius. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shibai.